Steve has asked some questions about specifically the habit of art. Tom asks, uh, is there a difference between directing Alan Bennett and directing other writers? I would say generally the answer is no. Um, the, the beauty of a director, I think, is to listen to and observe the rhythms of a writer and to excavate the heart of a play. And you do that in different ways. Um, in the case of The Habit of Art, there was a fairly hefty cut to do before we started the play because the original production at the National Theatre had been for a much bigger cast and was very specific to the National Theatre itself. And I thought that would adding... Uh, a, a, the play is a, a play within a play anyway, and to put another frame on top of that, that we are pretending we're at the National Theatre when we're not, and then we're pretending to be in a rehearsal room, and then we're pretending to do a play, it seemed to me to be one frame too many. So I presented a cut via his agent to Alan before it started, and I'm very, very relieved and grateful to him um, that he okayed it, and that's what we went ahead with. Um, generally speaking, um, the, the beauty of the director and the cast is to be faithful to the writer's intentions in as far as you understand them. That's not to say that you just slavishly do what has been done before. Of course, you make it your own and the actors make it their own. Um, but the play is of primary importance. I, I don't see myself as uh, a director who capers about in front of a show saying, look at me, look at me, look at me. Um, I, I hope I say, look at the play, listen to the play, and most particularly, listen to its heart, listen to what's beating away inside it. it, it yes, it's very witty, it's very flashy, it's very clever, but it's also about something tremendously important and our business as actors and creative team is to get to that heart. Jerry says, uh, would people be surprised or have people been surprised by the content of The Habit of Art? Uh, a play about W.H. Jordan and Benjamin Britten um, maybe gives them some information they weren't expecting. Now, I, I wonder whether that's a veiled reference to the sexual content of the play. And um, I, I would say that there's nothing in it, there's really nothing in it, uh, that is not drawn from uh, historical authenticity, except for the central fact of the play, which is that Britain and Norden did not meet again after they parted acrimoniously in the late 1940s. Um, so Alan Bennett supposes a, a meeting in the 70s between them, before, just before um, each of them uh, dies, when Britain's working on his opera, his last opera, Death in Venice, and Auden is living in um, Grace and Favour Cottage in Christchurch in Oxford. That never happened. The rest of it, their concerns, their relationship with their work, their relationship with their own sexuality, the relationship between hidden pressure and creativity, or honesty and open-heartedness and creativity that is the nub of the play, the, the, the centrality of its argument between these two old friends but sharply contrasted men. Um, that's a, a wonderful writer taking the facts of biography at his disposal and transforming them into something real and informative and inspiring, I think. Grace, and also Jerry, who asked the previous question, ask about the unique challenges of the play, the nature of the play within the play, that everybody in the piece, apart from uh, Neil, the author, is uh, playing two parts, at least two parts. And did I allow the characters or encourage the characters to bleed into each other? I think it's an interesting question, and it's one of the great um, fun things about um, rehearsing and performing this particular play, is that you're essentially playing two people. Um, and I, I think rather than allowing them to bleed into each other, the, uh, the imperative is to keep them separate, so that you know the actor and you know the part they're playing. For instance, Fitz who plays Auden. Fitz is a frightened, selfish man who lashes out with rage because he's terrified of not remembering his lines and of not being the successful actor that he has been for many, many years. Auden, on the other hand, is a massively open-hearted, generous, wise, kind mess of a man, like a piece of old crumpled bedding, but with the heart the size of a planet. 
Henry, who plays Britain, is, uh, as a person, is much, much more at ease with himself than Britain is. Britain is tight, repressed, nervous, and that's, it's that repression that leads to his steeliness, his resolve, and is an essential part of his creativity. Henry is just much more comfortable in his own skin. So I think there's, particularly with those two people, there's great fun to be had in the contrast between the actor playing the part and the part themselves.